How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat bizarre mystery that was technically discovered a couple of decades ago, but has now been officially reanalyzed, reassessed, re-examined, with the researchers in the process discovering that it's um, still a mystery, even bigger one than before. And in this case, it's a mystery involving a very strange detection of radio waves coming from inside ice in Antarctica. Most recently reported in this study, on the search for the anomalous events detected by Anita using the Pierre Auger Observatory. And so let's discuss exactly what all of this means, what this analysis was all about, and of course discuss the anomaly and what it potentially means. And I guess let's start with that. Here we have to go back to 2006 and a somewhat intriguing mission known as Anita, Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna. Although technically this was not just an antenna, this was literally a flying observatory. Because ANITA is an experiment mostly designed to study various cosmic neutrinos by detecting various emissions from neutrinos as they pass through the Antarctic ice. But in order to detect them, it had to be flying above this ice. And so here this observatory was suspended from a helium balloon flying above approximately 37,000 meters or I guess just over 100,000 feet in altitude. With this whole mission being funded and led by NASA and the University of Hawaii at Manoa. But in terms of the actual science, here this was based on something really intriguing. It's actually known as Ascarian radiation, an effect that usually causes very specific emissions of radio waves or microwaves when a fast-moving powerful particle passes through something containing salt at an extremely high velocity, usually higher than the light is allowed to travel in this particular material. So it's kind of like the famous Cherenkov radiation, but in this case it produces radio light and requires a dielectric material. So in this case it can actually be produced by passing through ice or technically even lunar regolith. And so this can be used to detect ultra high energy neutrinos by flying these high altitude observatories. And so over the period of approximately 10 years, ANITA did discover several anomalous radio signatures consistent with some kind of a very powerful particle producing unusual emissions. And the first such detection was back in 2006. Here there was a detection of a short pulse of radio waves coming directly from below, as if it was actually coming from the Antarctica ice. But surprisingly this unusual event resembled an upside down shower of cosmic rays. So this was not something bouncing from the surface as predicted previously, instead it literally seemed to be coming from ice, or it passed through ice and thus possibly passed through the entire planet. And since the purpose of this detector was to try to discover very powerful and very unusual events, although in this case the purpose was to actually find unusual neutrinos, here it kind of completed its mission almost right away. It detected a very bizarre, very unexpected and potentially a rare event. But this was just the first. There was another one a few years later, reported in this study back in 2018. An unusual upward going cosmic ray-like event in the third flight of ANITA. And that of course implied that something really bizarre was happening here and something that actually did not have a physical explanation. Because none of the previous assumptions and previous explanations seemed to fit the detection and the evidence. All of these radio waves that were detected were at very steep angles, at least 30 degrees below the surface. And this was practically impossible according to the standard model of neutrino properties. And so some of the follow-up studies by the famous Ice Cube Neutrino Experiment, although this experiment searches for neutrinos with much lower energy, ended up not seeing anything, especially from the location where these events might have happened. In other words, if neutrinos were coming from somewhere, there seemed to be nothing powerful in that particular location. But apart from these two anomalies, Anita actually did discover something it was searching for this whole time. Here there were four events during the ANITA-4 mission that were directly consistent with something scientists were looking for for a very long time. A type of a particle air shower produced by extremely powerful cosmic rays or extremely powerful particles coming from other galaxies and specifically something that results in the elusive tau neutrino. One of three types of known neutrinos and the most elusive of them all and also technically the most powerful. And though we've detected quite a lot of electron neutrinos and some muon neutrinos, tau neutrinos have always been kind of elusive. And when a tau neutrino interacts with any kind of matter, for example ice, it produces a tau particle, which is sort of like an electron but extremely heavy, over 3000 times the mass in total. But tau leptons don't usually stay around for too long 
and decay producing a cascade of extremely powerful particles that then produce all sorts of emissions. And so normally this is supposed to produce a kind of a double explosion or double peak with two very bright emissions in a very short period of time. And so Anita was able to discover this a few years back. But these tau emissions were completely different from these strange radio emissions detected previously. In other words, even though Anita discovered what it was supposed to find, here we still had this very bizarre mystery. The mystery of strange radio waves literally coming from inside ice, but resembling some kind of a cosmic particle coming from inside the planet. And there was absolutely no explanation for any of this. And so here some scientists suggested maybe a completely new unknown particle, some scientists suggested the mysterious dark matter, but some scientists still thought that maybe this is a neutrino, but a neutrino that got super lucky and ended up passing through the entire planet until its final interaction inside the ice. So here this would be something coming through the arctic ice first, shooting through the planet and then coming out from the other side. Or something similar to this, but basically passing through the whole planet. And based on the observations, it would also have to be a very powerful neutrino coming from a super powerful event, so technically this could be an object that should be detectable with some kind of a telescope. So here we're talking about either a supermassive black hole or some kind of a quasar or a blazer, or maybe some kind of a supernova event. But out of these two anomalies, only 2014 detection might have been possibly a result of a supernova. Here there was actually a supernova happening around a very similar time frame, and it's actually this supernova from the galaxy Massey 82, and a supernova that produced this extremely beautiful light echo with this gorgeous image showing us where it happened. But because this was a type 1a supernova, this was also kind of difficult to match, because we don't think these supernova should be capable of producing neutrinos of such power. And so in order to confirm if maybe these are supernova events, researchers had to do one thing. They had to try to find a supernova in 2006 as well. In other words, in order to explain this and to confirm that this was a neutrino, and the neutrino that somehow passed through the entire planet, researchers had to find some kind of a powerful source, and specifically another supernova. And because both signals in this case were characterized by a very specific pattern of light and a very specific radio emission, and also because in this case scientists had a general idea where it possibly came from, here this was just a matter of going through some of the older data in order to see if something exploded in 2006. And so to solve the mystery, scientists focused on the data from the Pierre Auger Observatory, whose main purpose is to study various high-energy cosmic rays. And the focus was on trying to find any air showers coming from certain locations that would imply some kind of a cosmic ray shower that might have been the result of a powerful explosion. But as I hinted in the beginning, this is still a mystery, because nothing was discovered. There was absolutely nothing found in the data that could explain the first Anita detection, and also nothing that could match the second detection either. Which definitively confirms one thing, these were not neutrinos. Here, because the signal was already kind of strange, and because no source was discovered, neutrinos just didn't really match anything. And so does that mean that maybe this is a new particle after all? Well, without having more detections and additional observations, nobody actually is going to know for sure. But interestingly, in one of the recent videos in regards to a different neutrino detector located off the coast of Italy, we've discussed a somewhat exciting new proposition and a somewhat exciting new explanation for some of these bizarre energetic particles. And though the video should be in the description and you can watch this in your free time, um, in a nutshell, maybe this is actually dark matter after all. In other words, maybe what we're seeing are extremely, extremely rare dark matter particles that seem to leave behind a mark when once in a while they interact with something as they pass through planet Earth. But the only way this can be confirmed and explained is of course if we have additional missions. And unfortunately, Anita has officially been retired, but we do have a new telescope starting soon. This is going to be known as PUIO, Payload for Ultra High Energy Observations. You can learn about this in one of the links in the description. And so just like Anita, it might be able to detect something very similar and thus potentially provide some kind of a final explanation for what's happening here. At the moment, as of mid-2025, absolutely no one has any idea what was detected. We just know that it was not neutrinos and right now nothing else makes sense. But because this new telescope is going to have better sensitivity, in theory it should see even more of these anomalies and thus potentially lead us to the source. But only time will tell exactly what this is. And so until those future discoveries, or until we see something else that's bizarre, unusual, and unexplained, that's all I wanted to mention. 
check out some of the links and additional videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and footage you've never seen before. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that contains early access and some other stuff. Or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.